engineering is one of the most sought after 10 plus 2. But what is the reality of engineering? Do we still have high scope and should we have high hopes with engineering? Or the engineering field has saturated? We'll be discussing all of it in episode 9 of Vartalap, a special podcast series brought to you by Silver Oak University. Hi, I'm Rashmi. I am a head of content at Silver Oak University. And together with me is Dr. Jemin Dave, who is currently handling two of the engineering colleges at Silver Oak University. Sir, thank you for being here and being part of this podcast. Thanks for inviting me. Today, we have him as a subject matter expert because he is the head of Institute of Aditya Silver Oak Institute of Technology and Silver Oak College of Engineering and Technology. Engineering is something that is known to most of the parents and students, right? A lot of the students have done their 10th and 12th, they're done with their board examinations and are looking out for engineering courses. First and foremost thing, do you think that one should still pursue engineering or it has saturated? I must say, like this field will be never be saturated first mm-hmm. and it's filled of opportunity mm-hmm. where we are not preparing any student who wanted to pursue engineering for a state level or a national level. The any skill which we are imparting by the means of this program, they are making we are making them ready for the global perspective. What are the different level of programs one can think of if they are planning for engineering? We are having various options available. I will start with the diploma program. In diploma, it's a three years of a program which is offered in Aditya Silver Oak Institute of Technology. When I talk about the BTEC, that's a four years of a program which is being offered in the Silver Oak College of Engineering and Technology as well as into Aditya Silver Oak Institute of Technology. We do have a master's program as well, which is a two years of a program, which is offered in the Silver Oak College of Engineering and Technology. And again, if somebody still wanted to carry out their research journey, that's a doctorate degree, then we do have uh, options available at Mm. the Silver Rock research section Mm. where they can also opt for the PhD in the field of any engineering discipline. Uh, Let's talk about the eligibility criteria. What are the eligibility criteria for all these different programs? In BTEC program, for the open category students, a 45% minimum is required. And for the other caste category students, which include the SC, ST, Economical Weaker Section and OBC, for them, it's a 40%. 5% will be increased when we talk about the master's program. Okay. So 50% for the master's program and the 45% for the other caste category students. Mm-hmm. And more or less, it's the same for the diploma. When you talked about 40% or 45%, that is the minimum percentage marks. But do we need to have this in 10th or in 12th? So I think that also differs for diploma and uh, degree, right? 100%. For the criteria for the diploma program, it will be always checked based on their 10th result. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about the BTEC program, Mm -hmm. it will be always checked by their 12th science result. How does the internship scenario look like for engineering? When, When does it start? Uh, Is it mandatory, uh, you know, or like can there be multiple internships with multiple domain uh, industries or it is limited to only a certain number? It starts from fifth semester onwards. Okay. Mandatorily, they are required to go for 15 days to 21 days for the internship, Mm -hmm. irrespective of a branch. So here I am not talking about the computer IT, cyber security and AIML. All the hard branches like mechanical, electrical, civil, aeronautical, aerospace, all are required to go for this mandatory internship. Mm-hmm. But when I'm talking about this type and based internship, mm-hmm. these kids are required to go through the rigorous process mm. before they get selected. Mm. But then after they are required to report to the only industry. They have a morning session in the college. Mm -hmm. Then after they are required to go to the company and do their job. And then evening, we are also having the lectures. From fifth semester onwards, these kids will be part of any company. Mm -hmm. They will be uh, doing their internship. Mm -hmm. They will be doing uh, live projects as well. Mm -hmm. So during the span of their engineering, Mm -hmm. automatically they will be trained for two years of a real world project. A lot of times people and the the, the trends that I have seen in engineering is such that, you know, engineering is now synonymous to computer science engineering and IT engineering and a lot of students are not opting for mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, chemical, civil engineering, electrical engineering because they think it is, you know, uh, it, it is obsolete now. So do you think that, you know, it has become obsolete or there are still opportunities in the core branches of engineering as well? It's a myth. Okay. 
hard branch is having a, as equal opportunity available like a computer IT. Mm -hmm. They are a talk of a town right now. Mm. But if I talk about typical the opportunity available to my hard branch students, mm -hmm. then I would say that statistically might be unnis bis hoga. Mm. But for each case, we are having a, at least two to three job offering available mm -hmm. whosoever is a pursuing their bachelors in either a mechanical civil or electrical or aeronautical branch mm -hmm. the computer it ecosystem like mm -hmm. you said mm -hmm. the it ecosystem has that acceptance capability yeah. irrespective of what domain you have pursued it mm -hmm. we will train you at our premises mm -hmm. and you will be part of any project mm -hmm. that's great mm -hmm. IT ecosystem is flourishing and they are becoming a part of it. That does not mean the hard branch is not having that opportunity. But if we compare about the salary package of a typical fresh IT graduate versus a fresh mechanical graduate, do you think both of them are on these bees or, uh, or do you think that, you know, it is a little challenge for the core branches graduates, fresh graduates? Again, the initial journey. Uh. When we talk about the hard branches, they may be having a more hustle to face. And why I'm saying it after 2020, that's a COVID era. We have seen that the IT infrastructure and the IT services is drastically boom. Mm. So starting from the junior KG kids mm. to the elder one, all are available on the mobile or a laptop. Mm. And that has made the uh, expansion span of a computer IT bigger. Hmm. But if I talk about the one of the wonderful example of my mechanical branch student, then she did her uh, B.Tech in mechanical engineering, ma'am. She was a part of one of the club structure. We also have that at the Silver Rock University. And currently she is working with the BMW. Hmm. So what I'm trying to convey, hmm. initially, she must need to start with the small company, mm. which is based in probably in Gujarat or somewhere in India. Mm -hmm. But if they remain in this field, then these are also highly lucrative packages, mm -hmm. which probably computer IT students might not have seen it. Mm. That has been achieved by the hard branch students. A lot of the students would want to do engineering, but they think that engineering is not very pocket friendly. And then they either go for diploma or they either go for some, some of the other uh, higher education medium where the fees is not that high. Uh, how does it typically range for, for a normal university in India? It varies. 100% it varies. Uh, but if I talk about then typical any engineering B.Tech program mm -hmm. that will cost parents from 2.5 lakhs to 6.5 lakhs. For an entire? Four years program. Four years program. Hanji. Okay. So again, to elaborate that, uh, the program which we are having at the uh, Silver Rock University, it is having uh, uh, the annual or four years costing will be 2.5 lakhs to 3.2. Okay. So again, it's a very much pocket friendly as well as the economical. Mm. And I would just like to add one thing. Mm. There are many nationalized bank mm. who is offering a loan at a very nominal cost. Mm. And only kids are required to pay those EMI when they will complete their graduation. Mm. So I think so if anybody who is just having a passion for engineering, they must need to avail for this kind of option. Mm -hmm. And there are very least number of documents required. Mm -hmm. But okay, it's all together a finance as a part. Mm -hmm. But ma'am, it's a doable. Mm -hmm. How the entire placement or how the journey has been for your alumni for all this while, for all these years? It's been phenomenal for me <laughs> and absolutely been uh, worked hard. Mm. We are having an absolutely dedicated department for mm. a training and placement cell. Mm -hmm. So I am talking about a person who is having a three decade of experience. Mm. So I am talking about his network mm. and the kind of a contact which he is having it. Mm -hmm. So that's what is actually adding a value to place my kids into a very good industry. Mm -hmm. But my process is very much shorted. Mm. Anybody who is in eighth semester. Mm. We asked them, are you interested for the training and placement? Okay. It's precisely placement. Why? Because few kids might, might opt for the higher studies. So from these eligible candidate mm. who has enrolled themselves, mm. we are having a 85 to 90 percentage placement record, ma'am. 
Okay. And I'm not talking about only 2024. Hmm. It's been through the years. Hmm. How um, welcoming do you think engineering is engineering field is going to be for the students? What is my belief system is hmm. and the way meticulously the engineering program has been drafted. Hmm. Anybody who can become an engineer, they can nail anything on this earth. Hmm. 100% the program which you have discussed. Hmm. Other programs been explored in detail, hmm. like design. But designing is also there when you are becoming a computer IT engineer. Why? Because you are required to design a website. Hmm. If I talk about the mechanical and civil engineer, then you are required to design your machines. Hmm. If you talk about the civil, then you are required to design the buildings hmm. or a bridges, hmm. XYZ thing. Hmm. So, this program actually expose you on a lot of aspect mm -hmm. whether it may be designing it may be computation it may be a maths it may be a science it may be a core subject mm -hmm. it may be a other branch of subject that mm -hmm. we call as an open elective mm -hmm. but engineering still has its charm mm -hmm. many fields are uh, emerging mm -hmm. happy to see kids are having an interest on those fields mm -hmm. But if you have still engineering as a passion mm. to follow, mm. then your all dream will be fulfilled mm. once you will uh, pursue with uh, your hearts and all into it. Right. I think it was a very good session when we talked about engineering. We talked about almost all the aspects that, you know, comes to any parent's mind, any student's mind. And in case you have any doubt left, uh, you can just leave a comment. We would surely reply to that particular question. I hope this uh, podcast cleared most of your doubts and uh, it uh, really helped you to come to a firm decision in case uh, this video was beneficial to you or to your parent or to anybody you know please like please share this video to those who are planning to pursue engineering last but not the least if you have not subscribed to the official youtube channel of silver oak university please do so until next time please take very good care of yourself